I'm originating from travel blogging and usually in my videos tell a lot about the particular destination. However, this one is not a recreational trip. So I will stay away from beautiful destination and exploration and would rather focus on the main aim what are we doing, which is representation of Ukraine. That's why next to our terrace we have a Ukrainian flag that everybody, everybody who is walking through this amazing promenade in Primusten can see. And this is also part of our work because during the war it's not only the bullets and tanks that uh, participate in the in the action even though this is like probably the most important part of course uh, there are other fronts that uh, also uh, do contribute to the result which is media which is diplomacy which is culture that my wife Marta is really engaged into logistics humanitarian aid and so so much more so that's why during this trip outside of Ukraine we are visiting events we talk to people we spread the message and we establish contacts with different organizations that are ready to support Ukraine all right and now it's my turn to deliver the speech let's go Thank you, Johnny. I remember our first meeting on other Nomad event around four years ago and connection was completely established from the very start. So I'm super nice to, to see you here again. And I would like to start also with establishing some connection between us. First of all, I'm Orest, like Forest without F, easy to remember. And secondly, I believe it's very important always to understand the basics. To, to go deep before opening some kind of topic. And this place in Croatia is very symbolical for, for, for me and hopefully for all of you. Because if you look at the map, the medieval tribe of white Croats originated from Western Ukraine that later on uh, contributed to forming the modern nation of Croatia. Also, we are in the uh, amazing historical area of Dalmatia along the coast of Adriatic. And, uh, I was uh, actually impressed seeing the flag of Dalmatia that is the same as Ukrainian. Probably there is some deep connection uh, behind it. In the recent history, parts of Ukraine were within the same country of Austro-Hungarian Empire within Croatia as well. And not long time ago, this beautiful land was torn into war, fighting for independence. Uh, you, all of you remember, over 20 years ago, Ukraine, uh, Croatia was also on the edge. And for now for Ukraine, uh, Croatian people and Croatia in general serves as the, like, such a tremendous uh, inspiration for our fight for independence. So my talk is combined of three chapters. The first one is freedom. And uh, I have a lot of common with you guys as well. I'm a digital nomad for the last over than 10 years. I know Johannes since over than five years. Who was on the cruise as well, guys, on different parts? Yeah, great event, numerous events all around. So basically, uh, we understand each other on a ground level. At the same time, I love to travel the same as you. So as Jimmy told, I've been to over than 120 countries. This is the map uh, with Ukrainian passport. I was always having my base in Ukraine, traveling back and forth. I enjoyed through this like amazing journey of digital nomad evolution, started backpacking, staying in Southeast Asia and bungalows, paying like $10 per night with my wife with the long hair, uh, doing some basic freelancing, remote jobs, and gradually building up uh, online ventures, establishing myself as the more uh, mature person and so on. And you know, like it's a normal life, how everybody is, is working. That's like another kind of the topic. And hopefully in one of the next event, I'll be able to share my entrepreneurial, uh, some reconsiderations and, and share my experience. But now we are focused on different stuff. So the life was perfect, right? Travel, beautiful family, uh, feeling comfortable financially and so on. And uh, in the middle of February this year, the life was going on. We were in Budapest, uh, spending a nice uh, long weekend flying there from my native city, Lviv, which is only 40 minutes flight. 
Uh, and from there, Marta went back to Lviv and I continued to another place. I went to the um, Karabakh area, which is the conflict zone between Armenia and Azerbaijan for centuries. One week before the war in Ukraine started, I was there. I've seen the destruction, I've seen the devastation, I've seen the sufferings of people. And I was like imagining myself like, wow, like how terrible is that? Maybe some of you also visited uh, other conflict areas, you know, and when you are a visitor, when you're outsider, it really shocks you once you are there. But still, like, you cannot feel the same what local people feel. And the same was for me. Uh, before Karabakh, I've been to Palestine, I've been to Kashmir in India, uh, and a bunch of other places like West Africa. But it was still this more outer look, right? And there I thought, thanks God, it's not happening to Ukraine. Little did I know that one week, even less than one week later, Russia invaded Ukraine. And the situation was already heating up a little bit. I was in Baku, in Azerbaijan, with a bunch of like three dozen other international journalists and geopolitical bloggers. And uh, I was about to board the plane back to Ukraine. And everybody was telling me, Oras, don't go. Don't go, there will be war, they're going to attack. Uh, other Europe people with uh, European passports who were about to board the same plane from Baku to Kyiv and then onward to Europe changed their tickets. They did uh, uh, the detour through Istanbul. But for me, it was a simple no-brainer. I, I remember the time of 2014 when there was a revolution in Ukraine. You all remember this time. I was backpacking in Mexico together with my wife. This is me on the hammock in Puerto Escondido. This was like the pure beach bomb experience as far as it can go. M many of you were in Mexico recently. It was even more rustic than that. Amazing place. Beach, holiday, surfing and so on. And I remember my feeling when I was watching the events in Ukraine, feeling completely helpless, anxious, and it was like terrible. So this time, knowing that the war is coming, I told to myself, I'm going to participate. I'm going to resist and I will do anything in my power to, uh, to contribute to the victory of Ukraine. So I board the plane and four days after, Russia invaded Ukraine. This is what happened at night of February 24th. There was a massive attack with over 70 long range missiles all around the country. Just for you to have the perspective, Ukraine is the largest European state almost twice the size of Germany and Italy. And can you imagine such a vast area being uh, bombarded in different areas all around? People in the West could not even imagine that somebody can reach them for over the thousand kilometers. But it appeared to be just a technical question. For those of you who want to follow the events, there is a beautiful website, liveuamap.com. On a daily basis, there are updates, and this is what's happening in the very moment. Part of Ukraine are occupied. At the front line, people die, and there are shootings every single day. Many people, many journalists, because I started to work with them, they have this like, you know, general question, uh, how does it feel? And I never could understand, like, you, what else would you like to explain? But I'm going just to show you now what could be the feeling when your own city, while you are there, is getting attacked. Еще одна, блять, твою мать! Вокзал бомбят. Смотри, смотри. This is a regular Insta story from my city, from the uh, uh, railway station area. And that's what happened in the city center where people simply walk. This is how it sounds. Scary. People are running to the shelter. Feeling like in the movie of World War II. Crazy guys, crazy. Let's stay safe and preserve this architecture of Lviv. 
it's still hard to process showing this standing in Croatia, but like that's the reality. And once this happens, people go down to the underground. So this is my family. This is my mother, Marta, my sister. We created a shelter in the basement of our historical 200 year old, nice uh, Austrian built building. And for the first month, we were sleeping in the corridor of our apartment in order to stay further from the windows. Because if there's explosion, I mean, uh, you have to be at least two walls from the windows. So when the airstrike alarm is happening that you heard, we were going down to the bunker. Bunker was, as a nomad, we organized, like we made the Wi-Fi, we put a table over there. So <laughs> like, you have to carry on somehow, right? And. Um, Another part which was pretty easy for me to adapt is that all your life became again packed into the carry-on luggage. So that was the easiest part for me. For more, peop more people it was like technically more problem, but every time for the first month when I was going out to the street to buy some food, to meet friends, I was always carrying my backpack with everything essential inside. In case this building get destroyed, I have my documents and like some like clothes and, and computer and so on, yeah? So digital nomad skills really helped over here. The hardest part was to face how your loved ones react on this. So during the first week when we thought Russian tanks will roll over in a couple of days on the main, in the center of our cities, all of my ladies, I tell them like this, my mother, both of my sisters, and nephew, like the son of my sister, they had to evacuate. So uh, they sit in the car and they were trying to cross uh, the border to Poland. And after three days roaming around Western Ukraine, fighting the traffic, they eventually made it out and they are still abroad. Another like the final housekeeping and uh, project was um, to take care of my granny. She is very old. She lived through the World War II. She had to change their location by force when she was a kid and her apartment is near the airport of Lille. Uh, my mother was taking care of her, but since my mother left, uh, we definitely didn't want to be in the position when the airport is under attack and the neighborhood is locked. So we had to take with my father, my grandmother uh, to the nursing home. And that was like the peak emotional part of entire uh, situation I remember because uh, in Ukraine, we don't send our older family members to the nursing home. But we were forced to do this. And I remember the moment when uh, like I was you know, putting socks to my grandmother, like trying to lead her out and so on. And it was like so deep because uh, like she were the one who was taking care of me when I was small, uh, when I was hurt, because my parents were uh, like working all the time. So like I really lived through it like very, very, uh, very deeply. She is still in the nursing home. We visit her uh, quite often. And it's good that all of them are safe. So once this was taken care of, you eventually start to think more rationally. Yes, you're not on the life-saving mode anymore again. Our city was protected with these kind of wrappings of the historical area because Lviv is an amazing, is the UNESCO heritage list site. So when I was walking on the streets, like I had tears, I could not believe this, the home where I grew up could be destroyed. So far is holding up. Uh, there have been a few attacks, there were the casualties, but it's still uncomparable to what's happening in the east of Ukraine. And then, you know, when you can breathe more clearly a little bit, I started to think, okay, what can I do? How can I participate? When I'm here, I started documenting. I started documenting from the first week of the war, created English language uh, profiles to spread the word, to spread the message uh, around. Uh, I've seen people who were displaced in Ukraine, over 6 million refugees left the country and over 10 million displaced internally, which is massive. And you know, this is the time also when you reconsider many things because like all the basic digital nomad values that we are striving for, freedom, financial part, uh, security, like they were all gone. My business didn't make sense anymore, which was a consulting membership uh, platform for Ukraine entrepreneurs. Third of them lost, the, uh, like had to flee their homes. Third of them lost their means for survival and business. Like I even didn't try to, to, to pick it up. I simply focused on spreading the message. 
it was also the time when I mean, you cannot leave the country, right? All the mail. So I, I came there knowing that it will be some limitation. And uh, I'm here just because of special permission from the Ministry of Defense, which was another project on itself to get, as you could imagine, in these circumstances. So I started documenting, yes. Uh, I did all this like English like from scratch, actually. Because before that, I was blogging for 10 years in Ukrainian language. And I started documenting, showing how things work, going to the war zones, establishing contact with the journalists. All of this, what you've seen on TV, I've seen live there. It was really hard to process things, but now it's getting better, obviously. Instead of docu uh, in addition to documenting, I also participate in all type of support uh, that is happening in Ukraine. All the resources, all people I know, everybody is doing something to contribute for our future victory. This is, for example, Jonas from Sweden. He is the uh, former Swedish soldier. And he is shipping, he is buying uh, four-wheel drive cars in Sweden, rebuilding them and sending to the front line. Uh, there was a situation when one of our relative is serving as a soldier, yes? And they, many of them are under-equipped in different this or that sense. And he told, or as like our entire unit, which is 110 people, is going to be sent to the front line soon. And we have this range of uh, requirements to, for our equipment. Yes, we get shoot guns, we, we get uh, armor by the Ministry of Defense, but the rest is usually we have to wait or it's equipped by people. Yeah, so I took uh, like a thing to buy uh, uh, 110 uh, tactical gloves for them, you know, and we simply collected the money with the uh, people, friends, and my new following base from abroad. We did it pretty, pretty effectively. So things, and Johnny was telling you, right? The Lydia was telling you how it works. So people contribute. It's not the way that somebody's paying tax and I don't care. Everybody's like 100% engaged in this war. This is war not against Ukrainian army. This is the war against Ukrainian people and the entire world as well. My wife is participating. She is the art curator and she is selling her own collection to contribute to Ukrainian uh, matters. Uh, she is um, organizing art events with different like international organizations to, to, to fight on the uh, cultural level, right? So if you are in the art culture, please feel free to contact Marta and speak to her. She is organizing um, uh, walk, city walking tours uh, in Lviv for, for internally displaced people and refugees. And in our city now there are a, a, around 200,000 refugees, which is a tremendous impact on the local economy and infrastructure. But that, that's the way how everybody is participating. And uh, the third is uh, like the outcome. Yes, what we can uh, actually understand from this situation. And first one is that obviously on the ground level it is terrible. People die. So many families are ruined, businesses, entire nice, prosperous, up and coming country now is turned into war. But I am the guy who likes history. I look also on the wider scale. And uh, to me, it looks like that the future of our civilization now is resulting in Ukraine. From the historical perspective, this is uh, the story how one huge group of people, over 40 million, is fighting for its independence, joining the club of the democratic liberate, uh, liberal countries. I understand that Croatia was going through this period 25 years ago. Poland was going through this period 100 years ago. Germany and Italy was forming them as a nation in the middle of the 19th century and to force. So from the right, wider perspective, this is uh, organic historical evolution and the way how our world is becoming a better place. Unfortunately, freedom is not free. You have to fight for it. And the, the biggest question here is like definitely I'm sure that with the support and with the uh, tremendous uh, like uh, resistance from the entire world, we will win. The problem here is that what will be the price for that? And uh, yeah, so uh, Eventually, in the end of the line, normal people on the ground level are the ones who suffer the most. 
That's, I was talking with the lady in the northern suburb of Chernihiv, just north of Kyiv. Their entire section of the village was completely flattened and you could not even understand where is house, where is the street and so on. Uh, I was present in Bucha during the exhumation of the first two, two dozen bodies. This is also uh, my picture. So um, what else? Like, we are continuing to resist and in such crucial situations, uh, you know, you can see, like you have the real example of the English proverb, the friend in need is the friend indeed. So many friendships have been broken and so many new friendships have been established during the war all around. This is my friend uh, Peter. I met him in 2009, 2008 in Budapest while, while, while being him his couch surfing guest. We had a nice conversation and any like couple of years or so when I was traveling to southern Europe from Ukraine, I was stopping over in Budapest having some meeting with him. You know, we had a nice healthy relation. So when my ladies, my females of my family had to flee uh, in the first week of the war, they like first they were going west uh, from Lviv to Poland where all the crowds were going. But the massive amount of people and traffic was so bad that they could not simply wait in lines to cross the border for a few days during the freezing temperatures. So it took them three days going from village to village, looking for the shelter, and eventually they understood, okay, we are not going to make it to Poland, where I already arranged accommodation for them. They decided to go south, crossing the Carpathian Mountains in winter at the time when Google Maps were not working because of the security reasons. At the time when the road signs were covered, also not to let the Russian army understand the geography. So I was like holding the phone with my sister, guiding her at night, how she could travel through the mountains on this sm smaller road in order to cross the border to Hungary, because it was already a little bit easier, yeah, that, that direction. And once they crossed the border, they simply collapsed. They told like, we, we cannot drive anymore, we just have to sleep somewhere here. So at this time, I remembered, okay, I have in Budapest, I have my friend Peter. Budapest is only three hours drive from the border. Why should they go all around to Poland, which is in a bad situation anyway, with over two million refugees. And you know, Peter, he like, he understood me like in no second, like Orest, send them here, I'll take care of the stuff, right? apartment, uh, her wife, they gave the baby car to my sister so they can roll in and so on. And you know, and this, this is like one of the stories which really puts in perspective that there are good people in the world and what we are fighting for in general. And there are many stories like this. I'm sure everybody can tell you a lot. So uh, obviously everybody's fighting, is looking for again for peace. Uh, these are like just uh, some memories from me that I remember how beautiful and how peaceful was Ukraine just a little bit over than two months ago. And this is the picture which all of us have in mind while we are doing those uncomfortable things at the moment. Yeah. Uh, so the, 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 one of the questions probably you have, how can I help as the nomad in general? And I can tell that many of you are already helping a lot. I, I felt this during this event, how people approach me, how, how, how Johnny, how Lydia were talking, how Johannes invited me to this event as well. All of this is tremendous support. And uh, many of the, our group are already directly involved. Hello nomads, we are at the border checkpoint between Ukraine and Poland, currently going to Croatia to visit you. And I've got here our long-term friend, Curtin. So what do you have to say? Hey nomads, sorry I can't be there in person. Uh, there's plenty of work to do here, but I'm gonna be in touch. Uh, I can't wait to see that fundraising dinner, all your smiling faces. And uh, we'll, do, we'll do a catch up, we'll do a Q&A. Uh, and come visit in Poland uh, if you want after Croatia. There's plenty to do. Marta, anything to tell? Uh, see you soon. See you soon, guys. Who remembers Curtin? Who met him? Yeah. So Curtin, from the first days of the war, he contacted me and told Oris, like, what can I do? Uh, we were still also disorganized. So I told him, like, I just come. 
He went to the border, uh, he stayed for some time in Poland, organizing the logistics uh, between Ukraine and Poland. Eventually he came to Lviv and that's like the video from like what, like a little bit over than a week ago. We were driving together from Lviv to Poland, crossing the border, then Curtin stayed there to, 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 to mind the, the business he is operating with, relating to war, and we continue down here. So uh, he'll be more than happy to, to hear from you guys uh, as well. And uh, yeah, definitely, Johnny, you, you are such a great ambassador uh, of the events in Ukraine with all your massive outreach and really uh, transparency and the feel. You become part of Ukrainians, I can tell like this. Yes, same as Lydia, as soon as Lydia was doing the presentation, as she is directly in war in supplying the most essential part uh, to our soldiers. So feel free to approach them and see how guys you can also support. And from my side, yes, just want to give you a bullet point what you can do in this situation. So first of all, it's important to understand that number one necessity is like supporting the army. Why it's important? If Ukraine will lose this war, all other things will not matter. If Ukraine lose this war, the question is which country will be the next. So that's like the top priority. I understand also that there are people who like, uh, I'm not really sure about, uh, you know, providing military support, what else can I do? So the second step, choose the project which resonates to you. Children, food, logistics, youth, mothers with small children. There are so many things to do, you know? There's, uh, Use your superpower, like use, I don't ask you to sacrifice something. Uh, continue doing what you're already doing, but shift it a little bit to support the Ukrainian matter. For example, uh, Jordan, you are in the, um, you, you, you are in the like, uh, get the remote work stuff. Make like a special uh, landing page on the Ukrainian matter, like how you can like fast track Ukrainians to get the job online. If you are guys in the real estate, you know, like dedicate 10% for, for uh, like temporary housing for people who travel back and forth. I have a friend in Bratislava who has a hotel and part of his hotel is dedicated for Ukrainian refugees who can find the shelter for like three nights to, you know, to get shower, to take over and continue. So think of what you're already doing. Continue doing this with a slight shift, how it can help Ukraine. If you need more, ideas, feel free to approach me anytime. And obviously, this is the war not only about bullets, not only about tanks, this is also the war of information. So my job here is to spread the message, is to continue raising the awareness, to keep it fresh, to talk about this. Yes, and together with this event, I'm conducting many interviews from Singapore to Los Angeles, doesn't matter what is the time zone, I'm ready to wake up and talk and talk and talk. So if you have outreach to your audience, uh, I'll be happy to, to, to share my message uh, in your professional perspective, but also somehow related uh, to, to the war topic, because this is the mission uh, I actually uh, took. Uh, please subscribe all the English uh, channels or a Zoop, pretty easy to find me uh, anywhere because this is the, the, the message we have to continue talking about until, until guys, uh, the war uh, is finished. While talking to many people, uh, you know, I, I noticed many of you are surprised that when I was telling I am coming back to Ukraine after this event. So once we are done here, Sunday morning, we sit in the car and we drive back home. My car is full of humanitarian aid. Before Primostem, I was in Italy uh, establishing connections with the local NGOs for their refugee work. They stuffed my car with all the necessities that soldiers might need. So sorry we cannot give you a lift because it's fully <laughs> equipped. Uh, before this event, I was in Dubrovnik on the conference. Now I'm here, then I'm back in Ukraine, and then we'll see what happens next. We don't do any plans further than two weeks at the moment, but definitely I am going back, right? So uh, that's important uh, for you to, to understand. And uh, the, the final uh, stuff, I don't want to come back with the empty hands, even though this is already a lot. And Johannes and Dori told me like, or oh, since you're coming to the event here to Nomad Base, Let's do, you know, let's provide extra value. Like what else can we do? And they told me like, can you look for a good charity related to children 
that we can support and this will make an impact. I want to make something that will have a long lasting impact. Food is good, clothes is good, but this is like a manual single like first necessity, yes? So uh, I just gonna play the video. I visited the orphanage next to Lviv and I'll explain more. Hello nomads. Hello nomads. It's Orest from a town of Veliki Lubin near Lviv and this is the orphanage with the over 60 children. Over 40 of them are displaced children from eastern Ukraine because they had to leave their places. Where are you from? Kramatorsk. Kramatorsk. А ти, Анджеліна, звідки ти? Маріуполь. Маріуполь. О, вау. I visited here just to show you what's happening, to understand better. And they are looking forward to your support. These are the children. Hello, hello. I really hope you'll manage to create a beautiful and efficient charity dinner. And what I'm really also hoping for, guys, is that after the war is finished in Ukraine, you will be able to visit my native city, Lviv. We will organize the Nomad Base live event in Ukraine. And together we will visit this orphanage to see the results of our previous donations. This is the director of this orphanage, Mr. Stepan. I received a document, like this is a list of different things that they are planning to do here in the nearest future. I'm going to exactly tell what are the different points on the conference and if we are able to cover at least some of those uh, necessities, that will be also great. Why it's important to support the, such places is because during the war, entire attention of the public funds is going towards the military needs obviously so such places are usually overlooked and uh, that's like something to keep in mind and not to forget about children about the orphanage because children are the future of every country and uh, so far it has been reported that um, over two million children uh, had to be displaced from their hometowns they are super friendly and they don't let me to make this video guys because everybody's trying to grab it so okay let's give the iphone to them just to play a little, little bit he he wants it uh, Tremai. Like when, when uh, <laughs> I, I think there is nothing to add. I just remember when they were driving, they were running behind this car, probably waiting until we come next time. So uh, when the director gave me a list of things that they really uh, uh, like require, they have food, they have clothes. Yes. Yeah? So with the last long-standing effect, in my opinion. Uh, they were like this kind of like we can we can buy a car for them like a van that they're able to to transfer people because they don't have even like a van uh, for them to deliver right uh, second is the possible playground because you see the area around is not well like adapted to, to children and then like the other things are different reconstruction part of the facilities where they actually stay so depending on how much we are going to collect I would start with the number one is van, which is a physical that we see it and they're able to use long term, including evacuation from the east. We can brand it with a nomad base to Ukrainian children. And I mean, all of you are welcome in that in that place. And secondly, we'll take it from there, obviously making everything transparent because I am part of this community. So here is the way we can do it. Number one is different type of uh, online support. This is directly my PayPal. It goes straight also like with the old reporting obviously. And that's the way I will be able to uh, direct funds in a good way. Also, uh, tomorrow they're going to be a charity dinner which is part of the 
um, talent show. So we'll have a donation box. You will be able to provide cash and put this inside. And in the end of the event, we will count it and we will have the clear picture how much money we donated. So it will also put a mark from which we can continue going forward. Uh, so you can choose, is it cash or is it like wire? Also, uh, I have a registered company in Estonia being the e-resident. So if for you it makes sense uh, to make a wire and have the invoice, I am able to invoice you, right? So it also works uh, financially prop uh, properly. Uh, that was it, guys, for me. Thanks a lot. And uh, another one, today at 4 p.m. I'm going to have the Q&A in Lisbon, which will be a meetup. So I will tell more and go deeper for those of you who are interested. Uh, thank you very much and let's uh, support guys uh, Ukraine.